Recently, Vladimir Putin decided to show off some of the new nuclear capabilities that Russia has. In fact, while he was doing so, he demonstrated how this new nuclear capability could target the state of Florida and potentially destroy it. Now, interestingly enough, there wasn't much of a reaction or any reaction from Donald Trump. And that was fascinating considering who he decided to attack rather than focus on giving some response to what Putin has been saying. Now, Putin unveiled a new hypersonic intercontinental ballistic missile, which cannot be shot down by anti-missile systems, by the way. He did this Thursday during his annual address to Russia's Federal Assembly in Moscow. He was quoted as saying, other countries listen to Russia only when it comes out with new weapons. You will listen to us now. He showed a video of nuclear missiles raining down on what appeared to be Florida's Tampa Bay Area, home of the US military's central command. So like no one's making this up, this happened, okay? There's no like DNC member or DCCC member who's you know, using a hologram of Putin to make this up. He did this, he said this, and there was no response from the White House. It was kind of amazing. One of Trump's spokespeople said, we're not going to react to every word or idea that world leaders express. It was the State Department spokeswoman, Heather Neuert. And also she said, it was certainly unfortunate to have watched the video animation that depicted a nuclear attack on the United States. We don't regard that as the behavior of a responsible international player. But Trump's reaction has been pretty much no reaction. And it's strange because he usually reacts to any type of provocation. Now, he did though get into a Twitter fight with Alec Baldwin. He said the following, Alec Baldwin, whose dying mediocre career was saved by his terrible impersonation of me on SNL, now says playing me was agony. Alec, it was agony for those who were forced to watch, bring back Daryl Hammond, funnier and a far greater talent. So I'm glad that he's doing commentary on the issues that really matter. Yeah, I was, as as Putin was demonstrating how he could destroy our US Central Command, I was happy to, to hear that Daryl Hammond was back in the news, because that's really the thing that we need to be discussing. Where is Daryl Hammond? Uh, so look, do I want the US president to fly off the handle and be like, ah, then we're gonna attack right. him? No, no, I don't. That's not necessary. Yeah, it's, I don't. But has Trump done that in the past in other situations? But do yes. we? I get the, that there's a lack of consistency, but I have to say I'd way prefer him fighting with uh, with Alec Baldwin on Twitter than no. saying provocative things, as is his want when he's talking to world leaders about uh, to Putin. And this is one of the things that I really find puzzling about the RussiaGate discussion, which is what is the end game? Like, what is it that people want to have happen? Do people want Donald Trump to strongly condemn Putin, uh, nuclear power? And in his in his usual kind of disrespectful, hyperbolic, insane way, so that what happens? So that Putin and Trump escalate things? Do yeah, they want? Yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, like what? No, what's the, of course that's not. The, well, I can answer that question. Okay. It's a it, it's it's got a very clear answer. So, look, um, first let's note the difference because when North Korea didn't demonstrate how they would destroy the US, but said something. Sure. He's a rocket man, we're gonna destroy you, we're gonna pulverize you, we're gonna kill everybody in North Korea. So that is how he normally reacts. Right. So let me give you let me give you some examples, okay? Because look for and let me be clear about one thing. I do not want him to react to Russia the way he has reacted to North Korea. The way he's reacted to North Korea is uh, dangerous, right. reckless, immature, juvenile. I mean, I can't think of enough words uh, to describe sure. how incredibly damaging that could have potentially been. And I'm lucky that things have calmed down since then. I'm happy things have right. calmed down since We're then. Lucky, yeah. um, but at the same time, the reason why I, th I think it's important to highlight this story is, look, when it comes to the sanctions that Congress passed in regard to Russia, he hasn't implemented them, refuses to implement them, refuses to ever criticize Russia. And then we have this act of provocation from Putin, 
No statement from Trump whatsoever. Again, it's not that I, I want a statement from him so much as I want to know that he is keeping the country safe from all bad actors. And I feel like he has this really interesting bias in, in Putin's favor, and I'm not quite sure why. I don't want to engage in war with Russia. I just want to make sure that the country is safe. So if they're creating nuclear capabilities that are so advanced that our anti-missile systems wouldn't work against it, are we doing anything to stop that? Like, are we doing anything to respond to that? And also, are we doing anything to prevent meddling by Russia or any other foreign country in the future so we can protect our elections? He's not doing anything like that. He has no interest in it. So that's what my issue is. And by the way, when it comes to North Korea, here are some examples of Trump's tweets. He said, North Korean leader Kim Jong Un just stated that the nuclear button is on his desk at all times. Will someone from his depleted and food starved regime please inform him that I too have a nuclear button, but it is a much bigger and more powerful one than his and my button works. It's just again, a weird difference in, in how he reacts to North Korea versus Russia. An inconsistency right. for yes. sure. And I think, I, look, I think anyone can acknowledge that it's troubling that he chose to tweet about Alec Baldwin over this. Uh, and we know that he watches Fox and Friends quite religiously. And we know that a lot of his, his tweets, his Twitter rants come from things that are discussed on that show. Right. And Alec Baldwin was discussed on Fox and Friends. And, and then an hour later, Trump tweeted about him. But Condoleezza Rice was also on Fox and Friends later that morning and discussed, she actually voluntarily discussed this animation that Putin put out of this nuke uh, hitting Tampa and he chose not to tweet about that. So where there's clearly but a disconnect I'm not, there. I'm not really looking forward to Condoleezza Rice commenting on this either. But no, it just no, shows that she's a, she's a Republican figure right. who's very yeah. knowledgeable about this topic and she is able to speak about it. Why? Why can't he speak I, about no, it? No, but I think she. I think. I mean, she should. To me, it's like there's been this whole rehabilitation also of Bush and the Bush administration, and I think that Condoleezza Rice, as someone who insisted on WMDs and you know said that there was no evidence that 9/11 was going to happen, despite the presidential daily briefing that said what was it, uh, Osama bin Laden likely to attack the United States. I mean, I think that that's a, a scary sign of. Um, Kind of historical, our short term historical memory, or, or how Trump's existence and how his kind of horrendous personality and policies have made everyone else who I think should still be persona non grata, honestly, he's kind of rehabilitated everyone by contrast. And all these yeah. people who the left used to see, so, yeah. as they should, as, as villains, right, mm -hmm. are now seen as honorable people. So but if people in the Republican Party are able to talk about Putin disparagingly, why can't he when that is an appropriate response? So, so, so let, let me get to the answer that you asked for yeah. earlier. So Katie, as usual, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying because we're both deeply progressive. So I don't want him to be bellicose towards Russia. I don't think that uh, is necessarily productive. Even Alec Baldwin in his tweets counter to Trump talked about, uh, uh, you know, I'd rather vote, uh, I would want Mitt Romney back or something like that. No, I don't want Mitt Romney back. I don't want George W. Bush back. And so, and and Bush actually did a war that killed yeah, exactly. all those people. Right. So I, I hear you on all that. But so, what is it that, that people are looking for? We're looking for some sort of a sign that Donald Trump is not in the tank for Russia. Right. It's not because I want him to go to war with Russia. It's not because I want him to to even create more hostilities or do any of the stupid tweets he does with North Korea. It's that I want to have some degree of certainty that he's not in the pocket of another country. Right. Now, people might think that that's overblown. I don't think it's overblown at all. I think that Donald Trump, there's excellent evidence already externally that we can see with our own eyes that I've talked about and that, that have been reported on that Donald Trump did money laundering for the Russians for decades, okay? Now, if he did do that, like the, the election interference is important because they went to the voter registration. They broke in in 22 states. And, and if they didn't get to the actual votes as far as we know, and that's, but, if, but if we don't do anything about it, then they might get to the voter rolls. And it might be China, I mean, it might be Russia, it might be China, it might be someone else. So we have to act and, and, and Mike Rogers, the National Security Agency Director said, Trump has not ordered me to do anything. Right. So now, and, and if he actually, whether it's money laundering or anything else, if he is beholden to Putin for some reason, then he's not going to take the precautions that a president who represents us 
should take. That is deeply troubling. So I'm not worried that he didn't tweet about this right. in particular. I'm worried that he never ever criticizes Putin from a guy who will criticize sure. Alec Baldwin and, and everyone on the, Rosie O'Donnell, everyone on the planet but Putin. To me, it is exceedingly clear that there is one, in one of the articles here they said, Trump rarely criticized Putin. No, he never criticizes Putin. And he hasn't done the sanction, he hasn't done anything with, uh, and I, that doesn't mean that I think the sanctions are wonderful. Right. It's just obvious that sure. there is something going on with Putin and Trump, and hence I'm not sure that tr Trump represents our interests above Putin's. But do you think that like our national security state would really let um, well, they're not letting him. <laughs> they're going all over TV, going, "Watch out! Right, he's, yeah. he's not doing anything about Russia." Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I think that um, my concern, and I hear what you're saying. My concern is that a lot of the hashtag resistance is focusing on Russia in a way that actually will just make it easier for uh, something, some kind of war to to happen and for the public to be kind of massaged and ready for that to go because there's so much. And I find a lot of, you're not, you guys aren't doing this, but there's a lot of like Russophobic language. And we saw this with Jen Palmieri who was who tweeted about getting into a cab with a, a, tr a driver with a Russian name and if she goes missing, look for this car. And I see a lot of scary oh, tendencies. I didn't see that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She well, gave the, the make of the car. I just look and I feel like it's, it's unfortunate because people who are reasonable on this issue get stuck in no man's land as Jenk and I often say because look there are plenty of people who are not interested in um, you know getting involved in a war. Uh, I, I certainly don't want to start a new war. But what I'm more concerned about again as Jenk said is having a leader who has our best interests in mind and making sure that we protect ourselves. I mean yes Russia is an issue but from any foreign country that might want to do something um, to impact our democratic process. And also, I want to make sure that we do have what's necessary to protect us when it comes to these weapons. We can't have, you know, Putin showing us like, hey, look, look at this nuclear weapon I have. It could wipe out the state of Texas or Florida and your anti-missile defense can't stop it. That is a scary situation to live in, especially if you have a president who's influenced by that leader. Yeah, and so lastly on this, just to double down on what Katie's saying about the over sensationalizing it about unfortunately a lot of cable news is like if MSNBC, I- MSNBC, it's yeah. the only thing I talk yeah, about. Yeah, if I, if I never watch cable news, so that's why I have a slightly different perspective than other people. For people who watch cable news, if you're vomiting Russia, I totally get it. Like Jesus, can you do a segment that isn't yeah. about Russia, right? So you're right about that and you're right about you know, forces driving more militaristic responses, which we don't want. Uh, but it, you, that shouldn't cloud our judgment at the same time so that we can't see that clearly Donald Trump doesn't want to do something about Russia and it's for a reason he hasn't stated publicly. If you like this video, bless your heart. We got a lot more where that came from. We do a full show every day, Monday through Friday. Come enjoy it ad free by becoming a member, tytnetwork.com slash join.